What would you look at that? Gas tank door. Older style truck. That's been butt welded in. Want to see how it's done? Stick around. All right, what I have here is 1970 GMC pickup truck. Uh, the customer has it mounted on, I say, in 2013 Chevrolet pickup truck frame and floors. The cab has been cut off it and mounted to the floors of the 13. It's an interesting project. The, the front section here of the box has been shortened up on this box as well as the back has been moved forward. Um, so it's a lot of customizations done to this truck to make it work on the the 13 frame. Now on the 13s the gas tank door was here but remember on these old shed trucks it was behind the seat. So what we got is we got this gas tank door come out of from like a 09 to a 13 style shed truck and I'm going to cut this out and I'm going to install it in here the same way I do the bolt welding technique that I've always done. And uh, you get to see two things now. One, I get to install the gas tank door inside the box, and I'm also going to go into detail on the butt welding process that I do, so you can really see how it's done. I never went right into detail on a lot of it, so uh, let's get started on this now. So I got all that cleaned up and as you can see I turn around and I cut this up this is all I went and done with this here now I'll take you over is I cut that in a square hole because that is makes it a lot easier to mount in there I just measured found a center line here is what I did through the center of the door where the door opens like so right and, and I had imaginary line gone through that then I measured down here and I measured down here and drew a line then I just start drawing square lines off of that and uh, cut it out. Then I just turned around and grinded and cleaned it all up. Came over here then. And then roughly where it had to go, I grinded it all up and cleaned it up. I know for a fact, when I was looking at the truck, the, the filler line come in through here and come up this way. And it went into about the middle of here somewhere. So I marked this line here, which would be lined up with this rail, right? So this would be the rail on this side, this would be the opening, so the gas tank door filler line would be in this section, section of the truck coming down here. Now I know for a fact that I would want it in the center, so I marked the center here. So it's going to be about right here somewhere, I'm going to have to cut a hole. So all I'm going to do is just find a spot there now that I'm happy with, and I'm just going to cut a hole in the side of it, so that the, I can just fit the cover in there. Not going to be the exact size as what I, of the panel itself, so I'll just mark that now and cut a hole out.
All right, let's go over everything I got done here so far. All right, I cut the hole in front of it, and I come back inside here and I drill four holes from the inside corners in to mark a square hole in here. So then I went ahead and I cut that out. Now this here got a hinge right here that sticks in, so then I had to cut this section out for it. All this in here later on will be boxed in whenever they goes with the gas tank and the hose up and they figure all it out, we'll make a piece go over the top of that. Now out here, <coughs> All I went and did was it just lays in place there. Now I marked up from here up to here and here and made it and drew a parallel line across here. And I remember I drew this here in the square. I know that this here is parallel through the center of this here. So I have this reference line to go off of. So when I drew this line, I just laid it on the line and then tack welded across here, and you could see the way that here is level. Now I know it's that's level, so when the door opens, it's swinging from Okay, now this is just tack weld that on. You can see it's overlapped all the way around. It fits pretty good. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back and start cutting this now with the uh, the grinder. This is where I'm going to get in the details to. So let's get started. Okay, the first thing I'm going to start doing, I'm going to start in working in this corner here. I'm going to cut this here through the inside body and use this piece of metal that's resting here to lay my blade on to cut much the same as laying the blade on this here. Now if I cut straight in it'll be a large hole. Now if I angle the grinding blade this way here and cut it, I'll be cutting it at an angle. By cutting at an angle this will close up the gap. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Now this is what I got drawn up here, a little blown up version of it. This would be the, the gas tank door and this would be the truck. But this, I got this made thicker. And this is where the overlap is to here. So if you were to cut this straight in through here, you would have the thickness of the blade going in through here, this way. But if you cut it on an angle, like so, like that, what you'll be doing is you'll be cutting this like this here. So if you look at it, straight down at it, when this piece goes in, it'll fall in, this will fall into here, lining up so there'll be very little or no gap at all because of the angle that you cut it on. If you've done it the other way, this will be your cotton blade here, this will be your distance here and your butt weld. So I cut everything on a 45 degree angle to get these small angles done. Alright, let's start cutting. That was my first cut. You can see what I got done here now. I cut this on an angle and I cut this on an angle here. And you can, if you look down, you can see that sticking out. Now I'm going to push that in till it's flush and weld that corner. Now there's a bit of a strain on it, yes. Right? But that will play in the part. Now, one of the advantages of doing it this way here is now all this is still held out on the panel by pushing it on this here, not caving everything in. I'm using this here just to as a starting point in this corner. I usually start all the time on corners, it's so much easier and I keep everything square. Now I got that corner tacked in place and as you can see, I lay this piece of metal against it. It's flush, just in that corner. I'm going to go along there and it's flush here. Now if you look at it going across here, now I've got that lip sticking out, but as you come across here, it'll pass right on over it. Now what I'll start to do is I'll go along here, and I'll start cutting this on a 45, I'll come to say this one here, and I'll cut it on a 45, and what'll happen is this here will start to fall in, each as it's going across. Don't cut too far, because it cuts too far it all goes flimsy and it'll be too hard to control. By cutting like two, three inches at a time, you get lots of control of it. You'll just keep an eye on it. Now I'll show you what's going on there now. Now that I cut it across, if you look down, you will see that this here is after falling in. Because this one here, where I pushed in on it, it wants to push in on this lower panel now. So as you're cutting it across, it'll want to pull in and relieve the pressure and make it flush going across. And you come across here and it's sticking out again still. 
Now, if you're looking through here straight in, you can see I can't fit this cutting wheel in there where I cut it at a 45 degree angle. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna weld that section up, but what I'm gonna do over here is I'm gonna cut it straight in, and I'm gonna show you the, distance, the difference in just cutting the edges of it on a 45 compared to a 90. Again, it fell in again. I tack welded it across there, a few tacks, and I'll just do that. I'll, I'll cut it and I'll tack it every so often. Now, right here, I had to grind around a 45, and right here, I went straight in on a 90. And you can see the difference, look. So, going on a 45 closes up the little gap a bit. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead now, and I'm gonna go on, and I'm gonna do this entire corner, come down here and get it all welded up. Now, I got that all done and run right across, and I got this corner done to here. Now, if you look at it closely, you can see that everything is sh shadowy there. But everything there is flush all the way down. Let me see it better there, see? And that is the way that there will work. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go on and I'll go ahead and I'll do all the rest of it and get it all tacked in and, and fitting. And you can see that there's no edge there now, see? And then your wonders about the piece inside, I'll get to that shortly. So I'm going to go ahead, cut all this up, and get this much of it all butt welded in, and I'll show you from there. There it is, all but well in place. 
everything has been let go you can look here and here everything is all even down around the bottom okay. may have dolly a bit on the bottom but then get behind the panel a bit and now that you got this here all cut you're left with a piece inside so you gotta come in here then I got it all broke clear here just gotta get it out there Grinder there now and get that there. Because of this door. There we go. And there's that piece, that's the quarter panel. So that's removed, and you're left inside with the butt weller panel. As it is. One of the keys that I like about this system, doing it this way, is I've used these other things. I'll show you now. I've had these for a number of years in my dual box. These here. I've used them. They've been sitting in my toolbox now, I'd say 10 years, I'd say. But you can use them. You need a lot of them. Because when there's bolt welding, you're dealing with having to uh, deal with trying to get everything perfect. Grinding pieces of metal, trying to get it all to fit and whatnot. But doing it this way, you're cutting as you're going, so you're making your own edge. So I find it a lot faster and quicker, and you can control it by having the piece behind it. Because... Trying to fit this large opening in this here by cutting it all out and then trying to butt weld it in, the chances are of this here wanting to move around on you is greater. At least when you're cutting it across and you've got something in behind this here, this is not going to move. Right? And then as you're moving around, it all goes, and then you weld it as you're going, what's behind it won't move. Ah, uh, bloody old compressor kicked in. But anyway, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to weld all this up. And like, I, like before, just tack weld it every bit. Don't watch your heat, blow, use uh, the blow off on it to cool it off. It has to make sure you can touch it with your bare hand, <clears throat> and then uh, that'll stop all the warpage. I'm gonna go weld all it up there now. cool off and touch it there or cool it between each spot weld and as I was going around kept an eye I may have to weld up a few spots here and there but for the most part now it's done I got my big grinder here now 36 grit disc on it uh, some people like um, using a grinding stone on them or using a flat wheel um, it's your preference whichever way you like it's me I'm old school likes these old discs usually uses a 24 but all I got here in stock now is 36 so I'm going to start grinding this up here now and uh, cleaning it all up and see what she looks like. Alright, so I grinded it all up and I've gone back again now just to show you and re-welded a few spots, you know, pinholes and edges that I didn't like and now I'm going to go back and I'm going to grind all that down and finish it up. And there it is all finished. Now I went back and I touched up a few spots a few times. Be, be careful grinding it off. Concentrate on the welding. Try not to grind too much of the steel off. Uh, you just got to watch that because all you're doing is just thinning out the, the metal itself. I've been at this for a lot of years and I keep an eye on all that. But uh, just to show you because it is all welded up. 
and you can see here it's a pretty good fit a couple of spots on it now you go down through there you may see a few spots I'm human far from perfect see? so it came out pretty good I hope that one there was helpful hope the tips were good and like I've said many times before, I hope you can understand me. <laughs> Until next time.